Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Monday. Goodness, it's Monday already, July 24th, 2023. It's about 11.53 a.m. here, West Coast time, California. Latest quake shows a 3.9. It looks like down into the uh, Costa Rica area. Getting a swarm of movement here across the area of the Caribbean plate. Also a little earthquake here across the South Carolina region coming in within the last hour. In fact, the last 10 minutes or so, 2.5 near Centerville. It's been a little while since we've seen any uh, swarming activity here across the uh, South Carolina region. I know earlier this year we were watching a swarm of activity that has uh, pretty much died out over the past couple months or so. But uh, either way, we've got a 2.5 coming in right now. See if anybody felt this earthquake. It looks like a few folks did report feeling this earthquake here around the uh, area. Did you feel it? Responses coming in mostly around the Somerville, South Carolina area with a, a zip code of 29485. All right. Of course, we do know this area is capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes uh, historically. Now, let me pull up the uh, USGS hazard map here. And uh, it's, it's basically an area that is, uh, I can't say overdue, but it's definitely been building up some strain here around the nor uh, North Charleston area of this region. Uh, seen some big earthquakes back in the day. See if it's got uh, the historical uh, data on here. Let me pull up the uh, catalog book here. We're just going to do a little custom search uh 5.0 and above i think for this area historically since about the year doesn't matter 1000 there we go and then we're going to draw a rectangle here on the map and just go check this out around the uh north carolina area well south carolina let me go back to south carolina that's what i meant to say <laughs> goodness <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's a Monday, right? It is a Monday. So we're going to use this region, just do a little quick search on it and uh, take a look at that activity. So there you go. 7.0 back in 1886. That was a big one. That's, uh, you remember these earthquakes out here east of the Rockies tend to feel a little bit, uh, a little bit more stronger compared to areas out here uh, along the West Coast. And that's due to many uh, different regions here. But as you can see, or reasons, let me pull back up this map here real quick and show you guys. So we got that earthquake, South Carolina, get my Carolinas right here, right smack dab in that hazard zone. And pretty much right where the earthquake from uh, 1886 struck. Goodness, that's pretty much right on it. So we really haven't seen uh, too much activity since then. Um, well over a hundred years or so, coming up on 150 years, it looks like, of uh, time that it's been built up out here. So just, you know, looks like there was a 5.0 in there back in 1817, uh, some number of years prior to the seven pointer. So, well, you know, this area can definitely see some large earthquakes. It's been a little while. So just a heads up, you know. You never know when that big one may be uh, pulling up out here. But either way, you know, if you live around this area, look at that major hazard zone. A lot of people out here in this zone should definitely have an earthquake plan. If uh, if you don't, I would suggest jumping on board. You know, just because you're on the East Coast doesn't mean that earthquakes don't happen. There's definitely a fault system that runs through here. We'll cover that a little bit later on. That's a whole different video in itself with regards to that uh, earthquake activity back so many years ago. But for now, a 2.5 occurring. A little bit of movement across Oklahoma. West Coast area. What do we got here? Uh, just outside of Biggs, it looks like. Right on the east side of the Sacramento River. 2.6 coming in. About 10 or 15 minutes ago or so. Roughly about the same time. Uh, when this earthquake struck out here, coincidentally, right? Uh, a little bit of movement here into the Northern California area as well. This is the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, a 2.9 and a 1.6. Now those depths there are around 22 kilometers deep, just upstream of where the tremor activity takes place. Obviously downstream there to the subduction zone, the Cascadia megathrust area. That's another majorly... Uh, 
I can't say overdue, but uh, hazardous area for the uh, folks here in Northern Cal and um, Pacific Northwest Bay Area. Of um, Looks like the Calaveras Fault Zone showing a little bit of activity here uh, from yesterday and today with a handful of earthquakes. Some twos and threes there kicking up off of this zone. Outside the Kalinga area as well, getting a smaller cluster of earthquake activity, mostly ones and twos. Uh, a little bit overnight and a little bit uh, today as well. Long Valley Super Volcano up here outside the Caldera region. Looks like uh, they're having a little bit of activity as well. Nothing major going on for now. Southern California. Some movement off the coast here of Santa Barbara. Looks like a 1.6. And uh, some earthquake activity along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. While the uh, for the most part the Elsinore Fault here remains quiet. The San Andreas Fault the plate boundary itself is uh, building up strain for the next big one, that's for sure. A uh, little earthquake activity out in Arizona as well from uh, yesterday. That was a 3.8 out there near Chino Valley, it looks like. Kind of crazy. Don't see too much activity out there, but it looks like things are stirring up here across the North American plate. Down here across the Caribbean plate here. Uh, just looking, kind of chiming in around the Puerto Rico Trench. Watch this area for some swarming. It has been off and on here over the past couple weeks. A um, couple more earthquakes there from today, it looks like. Continue to watch that uh, for some movement. Looks like um, 3.9 coming in late last night into that Puerto Rico Trench area. South America region here. Got uh, a little bit of activity on the map also on the earthquake 3d globe here some threes and fours kicking up in that cluster alaska looks like they had a five pointer overnight so let's go check out uh what's going on up north here well it looks like uh, usgs downgrading that to a 4.5 but the emsc model showing a five pointer uh 5.1 there into that uh the subduction zone area of the aleutian trench this one coming in about 5 o'clock this morning, 42 kilometers deep. Some movement throughout the uh, Cook Strait area as well. We're Cook Inlet, eastward, westward, <laughs> Monday. Uh, some activity lighten up here in the last hour or so. All right, further west, what do we got here? A little bit of movement across the Japan area. Uh, both of these from yesterday, it looks like. The last one is a 4.4. Uh, See what we have for uh, the Earthquake 3D globe here. Of course, remember we did have uh, some deep movement taking place here into the Tonga Trench area yesterday. Uh, it looks as though haven't really seen any adjustment along the plate boundary yet. A little bit down here across the New Zealand area with some twos and threes. Uh, but I'm expecting this to fill in across the uh, Papua New Guinea area, Solomon Islands. I will continue to watch that area for some movement. Uh, let's see, USGS reporting a 3.2, surprisingly there. Uh, near Lincoln, New Zealand, South Island area, off the plate boundary, just south of the Christchurch area. Let's go ahead and check out <coughs> the um, GeoNet servers here real quick. Stand by for a second while I pull these up and uh, see what's going on there in New Zealand. Two point, well... Let's go over here to the all magnitudes map here and see what we have. A couple ones showing up on the list over here to the left. 2.6. There's a 4.0. That's way up along the Kermadec Trench three hours ago. Another 4.0. Um, 4.3 way up there as well. I'm guessing this uh, 3.2. That's from late last night. It looks like about 10 o'clock my time or so. see here where there's where there where it's at um 4.3 way down south island that's a little crazy unnoticed just off the southern tip there of south island as you can see on the map a little bit of activity stirring up uh, let me bring up the earthquake drums map here and see what we have going on a little activity scattered out and about a couple of those stations there is the um, 
that's going to be the deeper movement up into the Tonga area last night. Notice between about 16 and 17 hours ago. Not localized to the uh, New Zealand area further up north though. Uh, but I'm looking for... There's that, it uh, looks like that three-pointer, 3.2 3 that the USGS is reporting there around South Island. Just outside the uh, Christchurch area. As we head further down south, it looks like a little bit more activity stirring up there, but not quite as strong as a 3.2. Um, and potentially, let's see here, is that going to be that four-pointer? It looks like it will be. A uh, couple of the further stations down south here showing that seismic signature from what the uh, GeoNet servers are reporting. It looks like that may be the uh, that four-pointer showing up. Uh, a little bit further down south here. 4.3 4. is what they're stating. All right, uh, we'll continue to watch that though. But all this activity comes, you know, following the deeper movement up here into the Tonga Trench area. That was uh, quite a quite a bit of activity here. Look at that, 500, all of these 500 and roughly about 50 kilometers deep for that 6.0 and all these other ones. So, you know, we're seeing a little bit slight adjustment going on here across this plate boundary which holds you know obviously new zealand and uh we're still waiting though got to watch this area across the solomon islands papua new guinea vanuatu uh, for some momentum and pressure um, if that doesn't take place and we're looking at strain building up here across the tonga areas at the surface levels i'll definitely continue to watch that for some movement because that's quiet now whenever we normally have deep large-scale activity like that there's a couple things that do take place and I just mentioned those about this area uh, or the surface regions of Tonga looks like a little bit of a deeper activity here across the um, just south of the Philippines as well got one of these earthquakes raised well off the globe uh, Java Trench looks pretty quiet here today only a 2.9 well inland and a little bit of activity working its way up across the plate boundary around the Himalayas. The Mediterranean area looking uh, fairly active, although some older movement quakes here being reported on the globe. And the Azores out here across that divergent boundary showing some activity here uh, as well in the 2 and 3 range. Not really seeing anything else pop up here across the Atlantic Ocean for now. And uh, South America, pretty good cluster of movement going on there. Definitely watch, uh, definitely watch a couple things here today. You know, like I mentioned, the activity here, lack of activity, I should say. We should should be seeing something pop up here soon. Um, but also uh, across the eastern portion of the country. Now I know we've seen a whole bunch of activity here across the Caribbean plate in the days past, uh, including somewhat of a larger quake. Uh, we had that 6.6 .6 down here on the 10th of July and prior to that there's been you know a lot of swarming activity here specifically within this region of the Caribbean plate uh, and that does if you really think about it that does affect some areas inland minimal activity across the Atlantic for now uh, far as any you know major large-scale movement goes that's a little odd because normally we should see at least a a good five or six taking place out here across the divergent boundaries but it's been awfully quiet but uh, as you can see here last 30 days of earthquake activity got this one odd earthquake out here um, into the South Carolina region you know it doesn't take um, I, I'm not for sure how these earthquakes take place back in that time you know there wasn't a whole lot of uh, um, data on it there was just you know obviously a big earthquake and a lot of folks felt it back in the uh back in the day 1886 long before <laughs> long before uh a lot of the um high-tech sensitive sensitive equipment was uh you know installed so who knows if there was a, a type of swarm before that or maybe there was just a small earthquake prior to the 7.0 you just don't know you know when you go back that far in time uh, but either way this region South Carolina uh, definitely sits within that major seismically hazardous zone of a seven pointer a seven pointer today out there 
would be uh, absolutely devastating. So just, you know, make sure you have an earthquake plan, folks. 2.5. Right smack dab in that area. <laughs> Literally right where that big one struck back in the uh, 1800s. All right, uh, let's see what else we got out here. Let's get rid of this cluster. I'm trying to think Yellowstone National Park, see if anything's going on here across the area. Uh, yeah, do, do, ch, ch, ch. Looks like, that's kind of hard to tell again. This was uh, yesterday. I think we had some storms blowing up uh, through there last night, earlier last night, early evening, I should say. I, I believe that's what that is. Um, as far as earthquake activity goes, that's going to look something like this. A couple of smaller quakes there over the last 24 hours, but I believe this is the uh, thunderstorm activity that we've seen rolling through the area yesterday, and uh, that's probably going to be the case here today. Let's see what we got. Yeah, they're up there in the marginal risk here for uh, some marginal severe weather potential. Mostly uh, looks like some wind events and hail events throughout the day today. Nothing major going on. Uh, space weather activity. Watching the sunspot region on the southeastern limb of the sun come around the bend. And it's a uh, dandy looking one. That could be a, uh, a very active sunspot that we need to watch here in the coming days. 3380 is the newly named sunspot. Welcome aboard 3380. Uh, a little bit better perspective here of the sunspot magnetogram image. Uh, it does show some a uh, little bit of complex structure within this core. Uh, and we'll continue to watch that as it evolves. Uh, but for the most part, uh, goodness, uh, maybe this area down here, it's hard to tell. It's a little separation, though, between these areas. But sometimes they can spark up. We'll continue to watch that, though, as... Uh, the days come about but we'll keep an eye on this one down here on the southeastern limb of the sun i think that's got uh, a little bit of potential right now 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 45 x flare around five percent chance and uh looks like it's flaring slightly a little bit notice that bright feature here a uh, little bit of low grade c flare activity i believe very low but either way it's sparking up a little bit on the global d layer absorption map no major auroras coming our way, unfortunately. Things look pretty calm across the KP index board. All right. Hope everyone enjoys their Monday, right? Is, it, is that taboo to say? Enjoy your Monday. <laughs> well, make the best of it if you can. Uh, I know a lot of people heading back to work, or maybe they had to work all weekend, still have to work today. It's just, you know, keep at it, I guess. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Stay cool. It's only supposed to be 100 degrees today here where I'm at. It's down a couple degrees from yesterday, so I guess I'll take it. Catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Peace out.